All right, we finished draining that fuel out of the sump and we took our little suction pump there. We had a little siphon doohickey here and we sucked out what we could down in there. And I got a camera here and looking down in here so you get to see what it looks like when it's all cleaned up. Um, you know, it's basically just doesn't have that heavy gear oil smell. And it's actually pretty clean and you can feel, I, I feel a little play in this gear here. And I kind of cycled it around and I watched the pump move and then I can actually take uh, my fingers and, and control the pump a little bit uh, and feel that motion. I don't see anything drastic in here. With it clean, I still can't see uh, what's holding or not holding that gear. I have the GoPro here that's going to get you a view of opening up the cover and getting at this end of the gearbox and then I'm going to bring you in here and zoom in and we're going to take apart the clutch assembly here. I've already gone down onto the floor and it's a good thing I did that before I just had that Burger King sandwich. Uh, new Southwest Burgers number five large fry and a vanilla shake and if I was down on the floor I definitely wouldn't be getting up it. <laughs> Anyhow I I got down there and it was uh, it was a task to loosen the adjustment on the motor. There's two access panels and then they put the adjustment right behind the center column in there and you you can't even get there's 12 sides in there okay and even with 12 sides I could not I had to use this and then flip it and do this and then flip it and do that you know that maneuver there and the one down underneath on the bottom um, I had to douse it with a bunch of uh, cleaner. Anyway, I got the motor to move and I got the lower belts off. This is so tight here, the belts don't want to pop off of this one here. And it looks like this guard comes off after this cluster's here. So, I'm not worried about those there. And we're going to start dismantling this here. While I was down there doing this, This old broad pearl, I got the nameplate off the motor while I was down there. It was, uh, it was tie wired down there and uh, anyhow, uh, 5 horse and uh, 220, 440, 60 cycles, 3 phase. This old girl had a 1150 RPM motor in here and that gave her 550 at the top end well I just got online and the same place I ordered up um, the motors for those drill presses I made for Cape Cod fence and stuff like that I went ahead and ordered a new motor for Pearl so we're gonna give her we're going to give her some spirit. Alright. You're going to be able to put your shaft in her and you're going to know it. Alright. 3, 5, 25. 3,525 RPM motor. That's going to bring her up 3.065 ratio from where she's at right now. That should give me a top speed on this thing at 1685.86. And we have the digital instruments that will allow us to check that when we're done. All right. Now I also checked on the low speed just to make sure that I wasn't jacking it up so much that I couldn't get down to the low speed. And uh, on here it's 13, and you do it three times that, and it was like 30, 39, something like that. And uh, then I look over on on the clausing there. And the low speed on that is 26. And I'd never use, <clears throat> I mean, 26, of course, you're swinging 16 on up to 39 inches I can swing in there. So that, that speed is adequate for that machine there. And I think I'll have no problem with that low speed on here. So... We went ahead and invested on that because things aren't getting any cheaper. If you need something now or you need something in the future that you know you're going to need, 
you might as well buy it now. All right. The motor was uh, 435.95, and uh, that had gone up a little bit from the motors. A, a very similar motor that I purchased already. Um, it, it there's an increase on that, but here's the here's the kicker. Okay, for the lowest low ball shipping to get it, um, I forget where it comes from. Um, boom, 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 boom. Uh, it doesn't really. It, it's in the states. I mean, you know, this is a USA motor. So, um, anyway, two hundred sixty-five ninety-nine. I think the other ones uh, cost me. I don't know. Less than a hundred bucks each to get here. And I'm not going to say anything bad about our president now, but I'm going to say that back when we had a real president. Um, <laughs> it wouldn't have cost me this much. All right, let's bring him, bring him back again. All right. So let's go ahead and start. I'm gonna grab my tools and stuff, and it looks like we gotta pull this nut off of here. I looked at the um, arrangement here, and it does give an exploded view, but it's it's a, it's an old picture of it, and it's kind of dark, but. This is the same kind of clutch as on the K&T and a lot of others. It's a past center clutch or an over center clutch. And basically you just got a, a spider here that's uh, um, moving in and out. And as it moves in and out, it tightens between itself and the disc and the hub of the, excuse me, of the um, pulleys. Okay. Um, so the first thing we'll do is we'll take off the adjustment nut, boom, and then that should leak. Then I believe it's a pull pin, then this will unscrew, then we'll get the next clutch. I'm only just from remembering, so I'm going to just go along with it. All right. I'm holding the brake lever up and because one way the the lever is engaging the clutch and the other way is a, a brake. It's one of the nice features about this machine that I'm, look, I'm going to be looking forward to. Now I looked at all the little linkages here and there's like a, a modern snap ring there. There's a C-clip there. There's another modern one there. There's a C-clip there. I believe I thought one of them was missing missing one. That one there is barely on there. Oh, there's not one on that one right there. So you can push that pin right out of there. It's lucky it's not falling out of there. Okay. All right. Well, you see that it's kind of like rounded on. I'm looking. I'm not really seeing a split right here. Um, I don't know if we have to shock this or what. So I'm going to screw this all the way on, pretty much about flush like that. Okay, so I can whack that with a hammer without destroying the threads. We're going to use the kind hammer first. Okay, and I don't think that's going in at all, or, or moving, or coming out. All right, that is supposed to be the adjustment, it's supposed to make an adjustment there. Okay. This threads onto it, okay? So let's pull this out. Oh, 
Okay, now we're going to feel on the other end, and we're going to look on the other end, and we're going to see what we got down in here. Okay, it's just a round, round shaft. Okay, this is supposed to come back and disengage. And then that's supposed to, yeah, okay. Why that's not going all the way back into there and coming free. Okay. Okay, that spring, the spring is not really holding it in there. Okay, there, I got it to go past there. Okay, so there must be a burr on there. And that spring pressure, it's working now, but I bet you that spring's broke or it's collapsed. Okay. Okay, here we go. Oh, slipped in. Okay, here again, I'm going to have to lock the brake <laughs> this is where you need three three hands right okay okay let it roll around so we can see it again this time this time We're not trying to knurl by vice grip here, but we do want to hold this out here. So I'm gingerly going to put this on here because I don't want to put any deeper marks than I need to, but I need it to stay out. Okay, all right, now we know we can take this off of here. We're going to put the brake on. Okay, now there's a little piece of crap in there. I need to get the scribe. Maybe it fell out when I was... Okay, let's see. Let's try this again. Oh, there it is right there. There. Okay. Okay, there's, this is threaded, this is threaded. Well, I think,
Okay, just because I know that I got two, th I got two threading pieces here. So I'm gonna take the link loose on here. Okay, I'm gonna pull all of these. These definitely will be replaced with something proper. <laughs> okay. That actually, it has a weird stretched out thread right there. Okay. Let's go ahead and squirt some lube on here. And we're going to see if we can unthread that we're gonna let go of that one there so we can That's usually a sign of pulled, pulled thread. Uh, excuse me while I look for my zip. Whenever I say I'm going to find something, now I come back and I look where the camera's pointed because I don't I don't want to hear you just go, hey, there it is. <laughs> uh, uh. Okay. Well, the can I can't find.
Okay. Um, Okay, I got the chuck key in, in the hole there so that I can lock it and use two hands here to unscrew this. Doesn't make sense, does it? But Over the years, things can get stretched. If the first part is the hardest, I guess it won't be too bad. Well, I have to clean up a thread, clean up a thread. Neither one of them are totally ripped out. I think it's just, it's either that stretch or this was compressed. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Want to unlock her now, so there we go. Okay. Now we can unscrew this collar and there we go. So you have adjustment of how close that clutch plate is being clamped and then you have a adjustment on your arm or your pole for your your lever there okay and that looks good a little bead blasting and there's that that pin and we'll look at Almost should. Sometimes I think I should put the cover on there, but okay. The spring. We'll shop for springs, but the spring should always be keeping that indented there. It shouldn't be loosening around. When we were test running this the other day, you kind of heard that cling, 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 cling. And actually, it was between those spiders. And this little thing right here was kind of giving the little, 
almost bell ring that was in that video. If you go back to it and listen to it, you'll hear it. And this is what was causing it. Okay, what's next? Okay. I know, I got video recording it, but that's not the same as having pictures just as, as you're taking things apart. Okay, there's a disc there, a clutch pack. And there's a little tiny spring, a little tiny spring, a little tiny spring right there. So there's a few of them around. It looks like one, two, three, four. They don't rotate, they kind of stay with this. This has actually got a little chunk out of it right there. Okay, we're over here. We're going to lay out the parts in order on the table here. <coughs> okay. That little nut there goes over. Little fingers. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's Okay, four little springs and they're bent up and they're not looking so cherry This is the kind of thing where you got little plastic bags. No, they're saying left over from the 70s. <laughs> All right. Now we got a disc here, I believe. Yeah, and I'll probably Take a little Swedish persuasion here. Maybe a pair of Swedes. That's all it took was a pair of Swedes. Okay. All right. This is pretty cool because even, even if this parts, even if these parts are not available, this material can be purchased and those are nothing more than brake lining rivets or brake rivets um tubular rivets will work as well so you got three here that are holding this disc in and you have three here that are holding this disc in so they they kind of offset it back and forth and it's time to change it anyway and this is also bronze impregnated uh, brake lining material and you can get this through mcmaster car all right so we're going to be we're going to be remaking that She's getting she's getting close to the rivets and sh sh stuff like that, um, and I don't know 
what that action is there, but there's there's bronze in it, that's for sure. There and there. I don't know if that's where they we're stapling it together or whatever, but I'm gonna, I can do that out of a round piece. Pretty cool. I like that. All right, and that went that way. All right. Okay, there's a there's inner keys too? No? I see a key over here. Oh, okay. It doesn't connect with this, but it did connect. With this. All right, and okay, we're gonna pop it out of okay, okay, there we go. All right, all right, that's a key there, and there's they're supposed to be yeah, somebody somebody kind of already worked this thing over here so that's been a breakaway there and there's a set screw in there set screw in there this one's right over the keyway here so this was running on that one there That's the sound I was telling you about. Okay. Go back and listen to that. Um, okay. So we'll have a little bit of repair on this part here. Or making it new. But uh, it doesn't look totally... This could be a braze repair here. And then redo that key. And the other thing... Okay, we're going to get this off so we can look at it here. But there's a lot of damage there. This diameter here, this is where the springs are held in. And actually, there was only four, and it looks like there's enough for eight. Okay, so it was it was under packed, under spring packed. We, we increase or triple the speed on here. We need to have things right up to snuff. Okay, so we're gonna have we're gonna have to deal with what we need to change. All right. Okay. Now we got German ingenuity here. I kind of like these things. They really do come in handy for a lot. Okay. Having just really nice square grips lets you do some things without. I even, when you're pushing, you ever have a little shaft and you want to push a roll pin in or whatever? These actually have a little bit of motion in them and they go straight in and it, it's almost like having a hand press for little stuff like that. All right. Okay, that's a round bore. That's not a round one there. That was a round one there. Maybe it only ran one one of these. I'll have to check out the picture anyway. Okay, a uh, quarter inch uh, wrench, uh, looks like. Oh yeah, okay, now that's not even tight. I don't know if it needs to be, but it's not. Um, I'm gonna put this over on my other bench.
Okay. Okay, there is two. That one. That one. Neither one of them are tight. Okay, let's... Yeah, no way of getting in there like that. <sighs> okay. <laughs> well, okay, that's better than none. Whenever you're disassembling something and you got uh, set screws, you always kind of want to pull, make sure that there's not another one underneath. Um, you can see this has a dog point. A dog point. This actually has a key here and a key here, and I, I think I think this originally was supposed to have two on the inside as well. Otherwise that plate wouldn't have had two. Another dog point, okay? And dog points are usually got fixed points to register inside here, so and that's what they do right there. There's one one opening there. I'm still trying to determine whether there was two of those two of those square keepers keeping that disc. Okay. The hole. Ooh, those are dark, two dog points there. Okay. That rod's still working good right there. Okay. And that looks like that looks like a bearing and a seal and there's a snap snap ring right there okay that that key should come out of there okay and it does okay those and those two dog points and this over on the table Okay, all right. All right, hey, here comes the pulley. All right, we can, I kind of like that because I'd rather, I'd rather deal with bearings outside on the press, something like that, okay? Let's, okay, our three belts. Okay. 
All right, there's a ring holding, so it's a bearing pack. And it looks like two collars in here. Well, the bearings might be collared. They still feel good. All right, well, we're looking at the plates holding those two shafts. The one we need to get out to get to the other one, and the one at the bottom there is the shaft that really we need to concentrate on. Had a little bit of a break. I decided to go ahead and pull this cover off of here so that we can have open access to it instead of reaching in through it or reaching around and looking underneath it. And so I'm gonna. Okay, I don't really see anything else in there, so. Oh, okay. Um, it looks aluminum, and I. <laughs> okay, I don't think there's any. I don't think they made aluminum in 1941. <laughs> they definitely didn't put it on this machine. Ah. Okay, that's going to be a lot easier. Definitely going to be easier to clean a lot of places that I'm not getting to. And Hey, hi. Definitely going to make it easier to paint. If I get the speeds I want out of it, I'm going to have to have flames on this thing. <laughs> uh, maybe I ought to let Lisa pick the color. Um, although she she wasn't too she wasn't she wasn't unhappy with me wanting to do the rat rod paint job. Uh, okay. Um, It may, it may go out that way. Um, yeah, yeah, all right. Okay, that's the one. But I gotta find the little Allen to make sure that this is tight. Okay, good to go. Hey, look at that, the whole shaft's coming out. Hey, awesome, awesome. Okay, put those down. Ha, 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 ha. 
one. <laughs> Not that easy. So we got to go on the other side, and you got to take out two things, and then there's a key that's got to come out um, before it can pass the shaft through this Timken bearing on the inside. Okay, so now we'll pull the cover on this side over here. Okay, those look like 7 16 Let's find one of those. And, okay, it is already out. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, there it is right there. Let me see. Okay, yep. Okay. Okay, that's got like an oil paper gasket on it with probably some like Permatex number two was popular back in the day. Okay, now I get to look in there. Okay, I can see that lower shaft. Um, I think to, to get what I need out of here, I'm going to have to... Hey, that set screw is missing out of there. So that arm right there. Okay, there's a pin. A taper pin there. That'll let this come out this way here. And that's a pin going that way. Alright. Let's uh, get a little punch. And find a little hammer. Let's just get a couple because we need to get. Okay. Nice, nice little taper pin. Okay, and that arm is now disconnected. Woodruff key in there. Um, that's not, that's not a real tight woodruff key. I kind of like to have tight in the shaft, slip through the arm, but this also has a roll pin. Okay, we we'll just, okay. Okay, that can go through that way. So we don't have to worry about pulling that other one. Oh. One, there's two woodruff keys that go through this thing. I got one, the other one dropped straight down. So before we roll anything, we gotta find that woodruff key and, and the other foot that goes on this side here. Okay, little shift fork. All right. Okay, I see the woodruff key. Um, I get my magnet and my flashlight, and, and as soon as that stops blinking, I'll get to see. Okay, I see the foot and the key. They're both right there. Okay, let me get my little magnet. Oh, 
that that thing around the end has got a roll pin or a pin in there and that's kind of loose okay that's another that's another boot there Okay, took a little while. I wanted to get the other camera on there so you can see. This this brass ring here is actually, there's a, a finger, and I think somebody added that in here. All right, cool. Okay, got that out. This should just come off the end now. Maybe I need two Swedes again. <laughs>
Okay. All right. <laughs> See, that was the key that I it, before I got that other piece done, I couldn't get that out. Tim Ken Barons made in the USA. Okay. We're now looking down on that shaft. We got to get that other rod out of there, but let's uh, set this out of the way. We got a roll pin that's we got a pine. Okay, I see it. There's a common uh, there's a common pit there that everything likes to go to. Alright. And yeah. There's, there's, there's packer tracks. There's packer tracks. All I gotta say. Okay, now. I'm still going to try to punch that through because I think I think that roll pin is made to hold that whole hub assembly on the end of there and I believe that was all one piece before and I'm going to look on the drawings that we got um, that I got from Keith Rucker's site and I believe it'll it'll show that but I believe that's what's holding this rod to that unit right there. Okay. Make a movement hammer. All right, and oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That was right. Okay. That went flush. That punch won't make it into that more. So now that we know it's more mine, we downsize our brass drift and our hammer and. They they just failed to they just failed to kind of get it right. Okay, but that's not going to stop anything. And this is simple. This is like making a draw bar um, for your bridge port. 
Okay. Lots of good projects we're going to have here. Things that are going to be, be new. new. You know, you know, I'm, I'm, all right. Now, now there's, there's a, a there's, there's a collar in here, and I see a, a one set, set screw here, here, and I bet you that's, that's probably a double, double set screw, and that's holding that in there. there. And I'm going to want to get that out. Okay. Widening out that angle on the top one there, just so I can see a little bit more of what I'm seeing up here on the top. All right. Okay, that's a long one. That's a dog point, and that's also been manipulated. Okay. Now that probably is a sign that this would come out. I probably, I don't know if I need to actually take that out right now. Let me see here. Um, yeah, that's it. You know, the bearings, I'm probably going to have to re-bearing this thing. Let's, let's see if we can buy all new items that I want to replace on this and keep this under the original cost of the lathe. Which was what, 3000 something? 3200 something like that that I said earlier okay um, everything ain't coming out that way so it looks like it's all got to come out this way here so we've been waiting let's get that one off of there well you can hear the fireworks out there tonight happy 4th of July okay didn't get it all the way in there and you can't you can't dick around like that you gotta okay 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 He's just shimming that, that he's shimming that bearing. And shim stock and gasket materials. That actually doesn't feel like uh, oil paper. That feels like a brass shim. All right, so we're going to keep that into play there. All right. That shaft has to come out that way. All right. Let's 
Let's, Let's just try a light tap, tap here. here. Oh, oh, I feel, feel something. Something moving. Yeah. Yep. Okay. 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 My little camera's piddled, piddled out. Okay. All right. Okay, we gotta find out what the... What the keeper is, or where the keeper is. Hmm. Okay, we're taking another five. 